sorrow looking like Abraham Lincoln keeps knocking at my back door by Danny Romine Powell. Some years ago, in the northern part of the county, a school bus and a cement mixer truck collided. Many children were hurt, some died. The parents were called. None knew when they arrived at the scene if their child was alive or dead. The situation chilled me to the bone. I imagined myself in the shoes of a mother whose child had died, who was so distraught that she lay down in the grass and tried to pack dirt into her mouth. I tried to imagine her grief, and as I did, the figure of Abraham Lincoln kept intruding onto my mind. In this poem, the story is told in the voice of a woman who lost her child. The figure of Abraham Lincoln, who keeps knocking at her door, shows how much is demanded during the first six months of the grieving process. I've never seen a man with so much dignity who had so little to give. A couple of months later, I took the feather duster down from the attic. Somehow, I thought if I got something old, I could go into her room, begin to sort through her things. I was wrong. I cracked the door and smelled her smell. It was like the whiff of a hairbrush when it needs washing, but to me, it was the sweetest smell on earth. That's when I saw him coming, again, empty-handed. I went down, noticed his Adam's apple, something you can't hold against a man, but it makes them seem so vulnerable. He wanted money. Look upstairs, he said. Check your husband's pockets. I went straight to the cash in the oatmeal box, gave him all I had. School started. That was the worst. I went to the store, knew it was crazy, but I bought notebook paper, green and yellow folders. I could see myself, the woman who had a daughter at home and the woman who didn't. What was I doing? I couldn't stop. Bought a ruler, a razor, shampoo. There he was when I got back, waiting on the steps, whittling. I knew he was hot in that black suit, so I offered iced tea. I want more, he said, all you've got. I went inside, hid the school supplies, filled plastic bags with odds and ends, picture frames, canned goods, a toaster I'd gotten as a wedding present. He twisted the tops of the bags, wrapped them around those big hands, hobbled down the steps, I've never seen a man so sad to be taking another's goods. Mid-morning, and here I still stand, kettle about to whistle, hands tingling, more alive in this hot water than the rest of me has felt in months. As he gets closer, I can see he's thinner. The sun strikes his hat. In this weather, it could be made of ice, the brim about to melt. He's the most demanding soul I've ever known, but this time I'm ready. I've wrapped up all I have left, put it on the counter by the door. He's knocking now. I hand him the package, a glass butter dish, and two knives in bad need of resilvering. A slight bow, and he's gone. I watch until he's no more than a speck, small as the grains of black dirt someone routed out of my mouth last May.